there is something really mysterious about an idea of a lost planet. A planet that might have existed somewhere in, for example, our solar system, and then for one reason or another became lost because of the gravitational interactions with other objects. And looks like today we're actually going to be talking about some of the new discoveries, very groundbreaking discoveries, in regards to these lost planets. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're discussing rogue planets, also known as planimos, or simply FFPs, free floating planets. An actual scientific concept that's still quite mysterious because, well, they're obviously extremely difficult to find. But despite of this, one team seemed to have persevered and discovered a tremendously large amount of these rogue planets in a relatively nearby star-forming region of space. But pretty much all of them being visible in this image right here, provided by the European Southern Observatory. And so let's actually discuss exactly what this represents, how these planets were found, and what this means for the future of astronomy. But also let's start maybe right here in Space Engine. So based on the previous assumptions about how many rogue planets we expect around the solar system or in a typical volume of space, here we can actually even try to find some using procedural generation. So for example, within approximately 10 light years away from us, this software expects us to find three different rogue planets, with one being right here. And that's basically the reason why they're so difficult to find. They produce nearly no light at all. It's maybe a little bit easier to see this if I sort of make other stars a little bit more visible, so you can at least see its shadow. And so in a nutshell, that's basically the problem with finding rogue planets. We know they're there, a few of them have already been discovered, but because they produce no light and because they're also not really massive to have a lot of other effects, in the last two decades only a handful of them has actually been discovered and most of these are not even possibly rogue planets. A lot of them might be either brown dwarfs or basically slightly more massive objects or maybe even red dwarfs, actual stars. And so with a lot of these examples you see here, there are still candidates, they're not even confirmed. But since a lot of theories regarding the formation of the solar system predict the existence of at least one more planet that probably existed here, but was basically kicked out in the early formation of the solar system, in the last decade or so, a lot of scientists have been trying to find new ways to find these planets, because we're hoping to maybe even discover some of these hidden planets that probably existed in the early solar system, that are now obviously traveling somewhere across interstellar space completely by themselves. More importantly, this might also help us find the mysterious Planet 9 as well. But in reality, their origin and their nature is still very poorly understood. For example, from the planets discovered so far, some scientists think that maybe they were actually produced completely by themselves alone, meaning that no star was actually responsible for their formation, and some of them might have actually been formed in some other way. And up until this point, or up until this study, not that many were known to begin with. For example, one of the most likely nearest such objects to us is this one right here. It's located roughly around 7 light years away from us and is most likely some sort of a really really massive Jupiter-like object or possibly a somewhat less massive brown dwarf. But it's definitely some sort of a rogue object, so basically a rogue planet. But this new study now might have actually discovered roughly around 70 to maybe about 170 new rogue objects, with the majority of them very likely being free floating planets. But why is the number so uncertain? Why is it 70 to 170? Well, as the study that, as always, you can find in the description below explains, it's really because of the way these objects were discovered and the way that they were measured in general. So first of all, in terms of the actual structure and mass, it's expected that many of these planets would probably resemble a planet like Jupiter. Many of them are probably a little bit more massive. And to discover these objects, the scientists behind this paper mostly focused on the region right here between Scorpius and Opiacus constellations, mostly looking at various star-forming clouds or star-forming regions that are normally responsible for obviously creating stars and planets. But in this case, all of the data came from roughly around 20 years of observations from a variety of both ground-based and space-based telescopes that essentially focus on measuring both the motion of stars across space, but also their luminosity and their color, with the telescopes then providing data for millions of different objects, and the data here being basically luminosity and the motion across the night skies. But the majority of the important data came from the infrared telescopes located in Chile, part of the European Southern Observatory. 
And that's actually the main way to look for these very, very difficult to otherwise see objects. They only produce light in the infrared. As you probably know, your body right now is also producing light in the infrared. And that's because both your body and a lot of these planets have a relatively similar temperature, at least on the outside. Inside they might be actually much hotter, and they probably are much hotter, but the stuff we see from the outside is usually in the range of about 200 to maybe 400 Kelvin. And so by combining the extremely accurate motion data from the Gaia telescope along with the infrared data from a lot of these other telescopes, the team was able to identify which of these objects were most likely not stars and were very likely planets. But the thing is, because of the way that all of this was measured, it's currently impossible for them to measure the actual mass of these objects. They can only measure their brightness and their potential temperature. And so because of this, it's not entirely certain which of these objects are actual rogue planets and which of them could still be maybe brown dwarfs. Normally, when it comes to defining brown dwarfs, at a mass of about 13 masses of Jupiter, we generally consider this to be now a brown dwarf and not a free-floating planet. So basically, a yeah, somewhat different type of an object. You can learn more about this in some of the previous videos. But in order to establish which of these were planets, the scientists had to basically rely on a slightly older technique. They relied on measuring the brightness of these objects. With the general principle being that, well, if you have an old planet, it probably had a longer time to cool down and thus will probably produce slightly less luminosity. And so here, by looking at a certain region and identifying its average age, they might actually be able to predict the age of an object and compare it to its actual brightness. So, for example, discovering a bright object in a relatively old region suggests that it's probably a brown dwarf and not a planet, with some of the dimmer objects obviously being rogue planets. And because of this, there is a bit of an uncertainty in the discovery of these objects. There are roughly around 170 of them in total, but only 70 of them appear to be certainly rogue planets, with the 100 other objects maybe being brown dwarfs, but still interesting objects nevertheless. And, as the scientists mentioned in the paper, this was really surprising. The sheer number of these objects in such a small region of space is unexpected. And this presents, I guess, a mystery and also an opportunity to try to figure out how all of this works and how these objects are created. At the moment, this is definitely beyond our original predictions. And this is why I actually started with the simulation showing us that there are only about three objects expected in the vicinity of planet Earth. Specifically, the scientists here suggest that there are at least seven times more rogue planets in the vicinity than we originally anticipated. And so within approximately 10 light years away from planet Earth, we might expect maybe 20, maybe even more. Which also implies that some of these objects might be formed in ways we cannot currently explain. So at the moment, the scientists think that some of these objects could be created by themselves just from the natural formation from the original clouds but only some of them and only a small fraction of these objects are formed this way. Many of them are probably kicked out of various star systems. And based on the sheer number discovered, this paper makes an implication that actually a huge number of these planets are coming from other star systems, and so the process of kicking out planets from stars seems to be very, very common. With all of this most likely happening within just the first 10 million years of the formation of a typical star system. And that is actually a really interesting discovery and potentially will lead to new techniques and new ways to discover these objects in the near vicinity. Now, if you remember, especially if you've been following astronomy for quite a while now, we didn't actually even know that brown dwarfs were that common up until, I guess, about eight years ago. And so a lot of these surprising discoveries in regards to brown dwarfs and rogue planets are all somewhat new to us. But more importantly, there are going to be so many more discovered in the next few years for one single reason. Remember how I mentioned that you can only see these objects really well in the infrared? Well, it just so happens that we have a very, very powerful infrared telescope being launched in just about a couple of days from when I'm making this video, which means that it's already in space when you're watching this video in the future. The world's most powerful infrared telescope, James Webb Telescope, is going to be discovering probably thousands of these objects within just the next few years. And so, in the next year or so, we're going to be talking a lot more about this subject as new discoveries come in. And by the way, if you want to learn more about the telescope itself, check out some of the videos somewhere right there, if it's already out. 
And so looks like now we're going to be entering a new stage of astronomy, the stage where we're going to be able to see a lot of various planets and a lot of various planimos around us and are going to most likely find some really incredible discoveries with so many more rogue planets and various brown dwarf-like objects, very likely discovered not so far from planet Earth and they were probably always there but we just couldn't really see them. Only the infrared telescopes can usually detect them really well. And so once we find them, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video and explain exactly what we discovered. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.